My name is Charako Yamamoto. I'm 18 and in my third year of high school. My dad is the director of a major corporation. In other words, he's quite a celebrity. My mom is really kind. I was living a super happy life every day. Until that day. I'm home. Dad, you're back. What's wrong? You look really down. The truth is, I was fired by my company. What? That's all? Wait, fired? Hey, don't run in the corridors! D Dad's been fired! What? That's all? Wait, fired? Dad, what happened? I don't quite understand myself, but there was a rumor spread that I've been embezzling the company's money. They found statements showing the money transferred into my bank account. Dad, did you really do it? No, I really didn't. I don't remember doing such a thing, but the situational evidence was enough for me to lose my job. What are you going to do? I'm the cause of the problem, so I probably can't find another job with a good salary or benefits. I'll try my best to find a new job, but we probably can't have the same luxuries as we've had up until now. We have some money thanks to insurance, so you don't have to worry about your university funds. Hmm, well, what's done is done. I'm sure things will be okay. Right, Mom? Mom? There's no way it's okay! You can't be serious! I don't want to have to live cheap! If you don't have any money to uphold this current lifestyle, then I want a divorce! Huh? Mom, what's wrong? Wait! Once I get a new job, we can live simply! No way! I don't want to live like that! We were shocked speechless by my mother's sudden change. Well, it turns out that this was her true nature. Jericho will come with me. I can't leave her with you if you're unemployed. Please, give me one more chance! That's impossible. I want you to transfer Chariko's university funds to my bank account. Straight away. Well, we're leaving. Huh? Why can't we live with Dad? We can still have fun. Enough! You're coming with me! Just like that, Mom and Dad were divorced. After the divorce, my mom was, well, the worst. This is lovely. One million yen? All right, I'll buy it. Thank you very much. Ooh, that feels wonderful. She spent money on herself without a second thought, but... Mom, I have a flat tire on my bike. Can I have the money to get it repaired? Huh? Why don't you just walk? Anyway, hurry up and make dinner. We don't have enough money to go grocery shopping. Are you serious? I'm giving you 10,000 yen every month! There's hairs all over the floor, too. You're useless at cooking and cleaning. 10,000 yen is way too little. Of course it's not enough. You're only a child. Don't talk back to me. Being poor is all your father's fault. It's all his fault, so if you want to despise someone, despise him! Yeah, but mom, you're buying all these brand items! My mom used me as a live-in housemaid. On top of that, she didn't spend any money on me. So, in order to earn my own money for cram school and for the grocery, I began a part-time job. Welcome! Charako? Huh? Dad? What are you doing here? Well, blah blah blah. I explained the events that came after the divorce. Oh, that woman. How could she? Charako, come and live with me. It won't be luxurious, but I'll take care of you properly. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Just like that, I left Mom's house and went to live with my dad. Since then, I haven't been used as a housemaid. And though we're not rich, we haven't worried about money. If anything, I'm happier than the previous time we lived together because I can spend more time with my dad. Also, Dad, I made it into my first choice university! That's amazing! You did your best, after all. Your dad's so... so... Four years later, my happy life with my dad continued, and I had a job offer from a pretty big company. I can finally repay my dad! Just when I was thinking of that, she appeared. Charako? Huh? Who are you? I'm not interested in being chat up. And why do you know my name? Oh, I'm not here to chat you up. I'm your mother's boyfriend. Her boyfriend? Charako, it must have been difficult for you. What was? You were taken away by your violent dad when your parents split up. He didn't give you any money for food and clothes, and you suffered a lot with him, didn't you? Huh? Don't worry. Your mom and I will take care of you from now on. We're here for you. Ugh, he's a pain in the ass. He's believed every single lie fed to him. Do you think we can meet, the three of us, next week? Your mom really wants to see you. Oh, my sweet Jarako, I really missed you. Mom, I'm so happy. It's such a wonderful moment. I'm... 
I'm so happy. I can't get used to how over the top he is. Joriko, congratulations! What? You managed to get a job at a major corporation, right? As expected of my daughter. Forget your dad. Come live with me. The truth is, I've got a few money problems. So I'd be really happy if you'd support me. I'm your mother, after all. When we're in trouble, we've got to rely on each other. Hell no! You say dad's a horrible, violent man? You're much worse. You threw him away as soon as he lost his job and used my university fund to play around. Huh? That's a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? Don't you dare! You only gave me 10,000 yen per month for groceries and made me do all the cooking and the cleaning. You used me like a housemaid. And on top of that, you wouldn't pay to fix my bike and told me to walk? And you call yourself a mother. Are you serious? I'm sorry about that. I really regret what happened in the past. I should have lashed out on you like that. But, but I love you. Please, please, Charico. Even though she's like this, she's still my mother. I thought that I should forgive her, but... I can make your dad a director again. So let's work together and help each other. We're family. Huh? What are you talking about? The truth is, that time I really wanted to separate from your dad. And your dad's little brother wanted to become the director. He told me that if we could somehow get your dad fired, he would give me money in return. So that's what that was. I knew something was fishy, because I had no memory of transferring such funds. But I didn't think I'd been betrayed by my own family. What? Why are you here? I brought him. You told your boyfriend so many lies. Of course we think it was suspicious. Oh no. Also, I've been recording the entire conversation. You were recording? That's a crime! I didn't think you'd do anything so petty. Enough! What you've done up until now is a much heavier crime. If I talk to the police, you'll be put in prison. Huh, prison? You wouldn't do that, would you? We're divorced now, but we were once family. You tore that family apart. That's true, but please, don't call the police. And the evidence of your crimes? Here it is. If I give you this, you won't tell the police, will you? I don't know. My brother took over the company using deceit, so I plan to make him take responsibility. Don't think you'll get off so lightly either. What do I do? What should I do? I'll have to convince Chariko. You'll help me, won't you? Of course not. Why? We're engaged! We're going to get married, so we've got to support each other. The engagement's off. Everything's too different from what I've been told. Moreover, the things you've done make you unfit to call yourself a mother. There's no way I can marry a woman like that. You can't do that. That's a breach of promise. I'll have you pay compensation for that. Go ahead. But now I know about the crimes you've committed too. I might accidentally slip something to the police. Just like that, Mom's lies were exposed and her engagement was annulled. Dad summoned Mom to court and had her pay compensation. Mom had never worked before, so as a matter of course, she couldn't find a job with good pay. She's currently working long hours on low wages. You work pretty hard, huh? I need the money. In return for the evidence that Mom and my uncle framed my dad, he didn't take the case to a criminal court. But instead, he told Mom that he would if she slacked off on paying compensation. That must have worked because she's working non-stop. As for my dad's brother... Hey! Oh, it's just you. Just to let you know, I found evidence to clear my name of the accusations of embezzlement. Evidence? The conversation you and my ex-wife had. She had been recording everything. It was all just a setup to frame me. Well, that's... Don't think that you're going to get away with something like this! Of course, because of the evidence, he couldn't make any excuses and he was fired. My dad got back his original position. As for me... Hey, you know you're not supposed to play with my things. What? Did she hide something again? She hid my makeup, so I had to go to work with nothing on. <laughs> Charmy is quite the naughty one, isn't she? It's not funny! I met Ataru at work, and we got married. We have a daughter now, and we're super happy. My name is Mandy. I'm a homemaker. I had some trouble recently. There was a car always parked in our front yard. Our home doesn't look empty, so this person couldn't have mistaken it as vacant, right? I mean, it's very rude to just park your car in someone's front yard. I didn't want to get into an unnecessary argument with a crazy person, but I decided to wait till the owner of the car came back. That afternoon, 
the person who returned to the car was Cindy, who had just moved into our neighborhood. Ugh, I'm so tired. Cindy? Hi, Mandy. Thanks for letting me use your front yard. Uh, hang on. I didn't say anything about letting you use our front yard. Don't be so formal. We're neighbors, right? Well, I'm off now. See ya. She just drove back to her home. I didn't know what just happened, but I decided to clarify the situation on a message app. Hi, why did you park your car in our front yard today? Oh, uh, sorry about that. My job is delivering things to different homes, but there aren't a lot of places I can park my car around there. So that's why I parked my car in your front yard. Oh, I see, but please don't do that again. Huh? Why not? I need to park my car somewhere. My husband drives to work. If you park your car in that small space, he can't park his car. Besides, if you are delivering stuff, surely you're allowed to pull up on the side of the road. It's not as if you're going to park your car for hours. That particular area only has small roads. People around there don't like it. Can you not let me park my car in your yard just while I'm working? Let me think. I, I need to speak to my husband first. Sure. Thanks. I'm counting on you. I spoke to my husband about my exchange with Cindy after he got home. Can you say no to that woman? She's saying it's only while she's working. Well, if she had any manners, she would have asked us first, right? Think about it. Even though she claimed to have been working, she left her car without saying a word. There's definitely something wrong with her. Uh, you could be right. Perhaps I shouldn't get involved with someone like her. After speaking to John, I sent a message saying no to her request. Hi, Cindy. Hello, Mandy. So, are you gonna let me use your front yard? I'm sorry, but my husband didn't like the idea, so I'm afraid we can't let you use our front yard anymore. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm a single parent, so if I can't work, my kids and I will starve. You don't care about that, do you? I'm sorry, but no means no. I didn't know that you were so cold. Why can't you persuade your husband? Ugh, you owe me that much. I'm sorry, Cindy, I can't do that. I want to help you, but my husband thinks that your lack of manners is a problem. Lack of manners? Well, you don't normally park your car in someone's front yard without permission. You ask first, right? We can't let someone who doesn't even have the common decency to ask first to use our front yard. How can I ask your permission when I'm so busy working? I'm sorry to hear that, but you cannot use our yard. I can't believe you are so cold. Well, fine then. You'll regret it. She sent me this message and finished our conversation. I sent her messages after, but she didn't respond. I was worried, so I spoke to my husband about this. Sounds like she's going to do it again. Should I put something to clearly indicate no parking is allowed? We bought some traffic cones to block off any cars coming in while John's car is not there. She'll get the message. Why don't we write no parking on the cones for good measure? Despite our efforts, it didn't stop her from parking her car. She just ran over the cones and parked her car in our front yard. Surprised, I said to Cindy, Cindy, I told you not to park your car in our front yard. What the heck? I'm parking it because I need to work. It doesn't cost you any money. What's the problem? My husband needs the space. I told you I will move the car before he gets back. She just yelled at me like this and left with some packages she was delivering. What should I do? I looked at the cones she crushed. I couldn't move her car and I couldn't call the police as I thought it would cause huge trouble and she might lose her job. So I messaged my husband and told him what happened. Can I talk to you for a sec? Sure, it's my lunch break. Cindy left her car in our front yard again. Did you say no to her properly? I did, but she ignores my messages and she ran over the cones and parked her car anyways. Did you call the police? I don't want this to be blown out of proportion. I know how you feel, Mandy, but if we don't handle this carefully now, it will get out of hand, you know. I know, but... Okay, I have an idea. John then stopped messaging me. That day, he came back with large boxes. What are these? I bought a security camera on my way home. For emergencies. Cindy would just ignore it and park her car, you know? 
That's why we need the camera to have it on record. Also, can you find out what company she works for? Why? Well, because one of their employees is parking their car in our front yard without her permission. Telling them that is not too much, is it? Good idea. I'll ask Cindy about the company then. So I asked Cindy nicely about the company she works for. Cindy, can I talk to you for a sec? What is it? If it's about your front yard, I have nothing to talk about. I will park my car there again. Not about that. Who did you say you work for again? Why do you want to know? Well, if you want to park your car in our yard, I want to know about your company. The car you drive, that's a company car, right? So if anything happened, I need to know who owns the car and stuff. I might need to contact your office, you see? Oh, if that's what you're worried about, sure. Oh, you're finally seeing sense. I managed to get the contact information of the company. Now her boss can tell her to stop parking in our yard. I think you are too optimistic, Mandy. She won't stop parking her car just because her boss tells her not to. She's not that kind of person. Huh? What do you mean? I bought this camera, didn't I? Don't make it a bigger problem than it already is. But I too was angry about Cindy's behavior, so I decided to go along with John's plan. Cindy kept parking her car in our front yard, and eventually she did something beyond our comprehension. Can we talk now? John, I don't know what to do. Whose car is that? I think it's Cindy's, probably her own car. So not only her work car, but she's parking her own car as well now. Things are going our way now. But you can't park your car now. That's fine, I'll park it on the road. Cindy started to park not only her company car, but her own car in our front yard, using it like her own personal car park. John was forced to park his car on the road when he came back home. Just then, a very drunk Cindy came back to her car. <laughs> Hello, I went to see a friend. It was so close to her, so you don't mind, do you? Cindy, how much did you drink? You can't drive like this. Do you want to come in and rest for a while? What are you talking about? I didn't even have a single drop. You telling me I drink drive? I'm not telling you anything, but I'm leaving now. Then she got into her car and drove off. Oh my, what a train wreck of a woman. John couldn't believe what he saw. It's a little earlier than I anticipated, but let's do this. The next weekend, he went out and bought a huge amount of concrete. He covered the front yard with it. Do you think it will work? It won't cause us any more trouble, right? Mandy, I'm just paving my own front yard with the concrete. It is my right to do whatever I want to my own property. Yeah, you're right. Well, you might as well fill up the cones we have with concrete so they won't be blown away. He was enjoying all the work and poured more concrete inside the cones. To prevent any more strange cars parked in our yard, right? He put the cones on the edge of the front yard so no cars could come in. Next Monday, I heard a very loud noise and Cindy screams outside our home. What's wrong with the cones? I quickly went outside. I saw a car smashed after crushing into our concrete loaded cones. And there was Cindy, who seemed to be in some kind of pain. Cindy, are you all right? How can I be all right? What's wrong with these cones? My car smashed up, my back and neck hurt. You did this. I demand compensation. Actually, we are the ones demanding compensation. Huh? Your husband? John took a day off from work. I called the police already, so you need to wait here, Cindy. Away? Why the police? I'm the one who should be calling the police! You've been parking your car in our front yard without permission. You ran over and broke our cones before. You went to drive your car under the influence of alcohol. When my wife tried to stop you, you just yelled at her and drove off. After all of that, we need to talk to the police. So could you wait here? The police are coming in a minute. Well, you can't go anywhere with your car anyways. I also called your company about the accident, Cindy. Why did you do that for? You're the one who told me the contact information of your company in case of emergency. We can't leave the car like this anyways. I don't 
care. When the police arrive, I'll tell them you did all this. She just didn't want to hear anything we told her. So we just waited till the police and her boss arrived. What happened here? The police officer was lost for words when he saw the car all smashed up right in front of the cones. The traffic cones kept blowing away, so I put concrete in them. She crashed her car into them. Oh, I see. She's been parking her car in her yard without her permission. We told her to stop so many times, but she didn't listen. Huh? Stop telling lies. I told you I need to use your yard because of my work. Officer, this is the exchange I had with her about this. Oh, I see. Lady, can you come with me to the station? What? Why? They knew I was going to park my car here, but they put these concrete cones here. Is there any law banning a property owner placing objects in his own premises? No, there isn't. It is her who drove over objects which were within my premises. That's true. Even if she was trying to park her car like she said, she was the one who decided to drive into those cones without moving them aside. Uh, it's because, uh, because, uh, um, uh, uh, I have uh, something I want to show you, officer. Cindy, can you come with us? Sure. What are you planning? John and I took the officer and Cindy inside and showed them the security camera footage. What they saw was the footage of Cindy running over the cones in our yard. So, how do you explain this, miss? Well, the cones were in the way, so... What you did was clearly a crime, damaging someone else's property. On top of that, you parked your car in someone's premises without permission. That's clearly illegal parking. <laughs> Let's talk more about this at the station, shall we? But, what do you... While Cindy was visibly shaken, our doorbell rang. We are so sorry for all the trouble. I went to the door and spoke to Cindy's boss. We warned her so many times, but she just didn't listen. I explained to her boss the situation and showed him my exchange with her on the message app. Oh gosh, I need to talk to her. We're very sorry for all the inconvenience caused. Cindy was taken by her boss, who was really giving her a telling off. That night, I received messages from Cindy. Hey, you got me fired! What are you talking about? My boss fired me, saying that I illegally parked and smashed up the company car. He told me I was fired! I didn't do that to you. You did that to yourself. We told you again and again not to park the car in our yard, but you didn't listen. It's your duty to help a neighbor when they are having a hard time. Parking your car in our front yard without permission, running over the cones which were clearly trying to stop you parking, are those the actions of a good neighbor? You knew I would just drive over the cones and you deliberately put concrete in them. My husband put concrete in them so they wouldn't be blown away. Besides, a normal person wouldn't run over cones which were in someone's yard. It's because they were in the way, so I just moved them using my car. If something is in the way, do you always hit it with your car? I don't, but... I spoke to my husband. The money we paid for all the cones you broke, we want you to pay for them. About your illegal parking, we spoke to the police. They said it's not a serious crime, but they assured us they will keep an eye on you to make sure you don't start doing it again. So you'd better not even think about it. If you are that hostile about it, I'll sue you then. Ugh. You wait. That was her last word on the subject, and she stopped messaging me. She really did try and sue us, but no lawyer wanted to take on her as their client. Even worse, the company demanded Cindy pay for the damages to the car. Because Cindy crashed into the cones on purpose, the insurance company was not interested. It's all your fault! Pay for the car! She was shouting in our front yard, but we called the police and they took her away. She soon moved away from our neighborhood. I don't know where she lives now. I heard a rumor that she ran out of money and the authorities deemed her an unsuitable mother, so her kids were put into care. I knew she would just drive over the cone, so I put concrete in them. Did I do too much? After she moved away, John said that he felt a little sorry for her. But she did what she did. It was her choice to do it. And we wouldn't tell a soul that we knew. My name is Atsumu Megata. 
I'm famous for my troubles with women. I was raised by my single mother who currently works at a snack bar as a hostess. This is the aforementioned bar, Snack Moni Robo. I used to live on the second floor of the bar with my mother. The girls at the bar were very affectionate towards me. While there were many there due to special circumstances, they were all very kind-hearted people. Because of my upbringing, I started to attract more women of a similar type. So today, let me tell you one of many stories regarding my troubles with women. I was finally able to land someone who seemed promising. This is Momiji. I met her at an inter-industry exchange meeting. Isn't she pretty? She works at an apparel store, always wearing the most fashionable clothes. When we first met, she complimented my dreadlocks. Ever since then, we would hang out and go for coffee together, which escalated to drinking together. I was very cautious of making the first move, but as time passed by, I couldn't contain myself. Do you want to hang out next Wednesday? I reserved a really nice place. Wow, this place looks fantastic. The food here tastes fantastic. I really wanted to go here with you. You always pick the best places. I'm so excited. I was ready to confess my love to her that day, which is why I picked the best place I knew. I was so happy to see her so excited. I bet this date will end up being the best day of my life. I decided to work hard the week before in order to clear up my schedule for the day. In the end, I was able to finish up all my work before the day. When Wednesday came, I was planning on finishing up my work in advance, but I got an unfortunate call from one of my work associates, Shiranui. Good work, Atsumi. Thanks. Could you do me a favor? No way. You didn't even ask what the favor was. I bet it's something work-related. Whenever Shiranui asks for help, it's always to help her finish up some work she was responsible for. When we first started, my team and I were able to help her quickly. One time, she begged me to help her with her work, saying she had some other important thing to attend to, which turned out to be a big lie. She just wanted to leave work early and drink. I can't believe he fell for it. I decided from then on, I would never, ever help her. I haven't even finished up the documents for tomorrow's conference. You are the one who researched for the documents, so you know all the data in your head. Please, help me. You were supposed to do the research by yourself in the first place. But you went over my head and begged our head of department to help you. Which ended up with me doing all the work. I didn't have time. I even gave you all the data last week. I was busy all week with other work. Still, how do you expect me to do all the work by tomorrow? At least have the decency to try first. You do realize work ends in 15 minutes, right? I was too busy to ask. Didn't you work overtime yesterday? Does it really matter that you have to work overtime two days in a row? You're good at your job too, so... Can you do it? I was working overtime yesterday to clear up my schedule for today. Why? Don't tell me a punk like you has other plans after five. How rude. You're not a kid anymore. You should prioritize your work over your personal life. Are you sure you're one to talk? I knew you went out to drink after you told me you had important plans. Wait, what? You really thought I wouldn't find out? I know everything. O oopsie. At least try to look sorry. I mean, you already found out, so... Well, I'm also meeting someone today. And do you know what they say? A girl's expiration date is faster than a man's. So, could you do this one favor for me, please? You're making me do all this work for a joint party? I bet you'll be able to finish in no time. That's not the problem. I told you I have plans today. Just tell her to wait. It's not the first time she will be waiting for you. Let's be honest. If she can't wait for you, she's not good enough for you. Then why don't you finish the work right now? And then go to your little party afterwards. Girls and boys have different standards. Well, I just sent you the data, so good luck. I already told our manager you were going to cover for me. Wait! You can't be serious! Goodbye. What the hell? I tried to get to her before she left, but she was gone when I got to the elevator. How did she get away so quickly? I had no choice, so I decided to open up the file she sent me and went to work. She lied to me! Her file was all blank! Even if I worked my ass off, it would take more than two hours to finish up! Regretfully, I decided to call Momiji to cancel our meeting. 
I'm so sorry, but I have to cancel today's dinner. Oh, is it work-related? One of my co-workers just dumped all of her work on me, and I won't be able to make it in time. I can't believe someone would do such a thing. I'm so sorry. If it's fine by you, I'd love to reschedule at another date. I'm fine with that. I know you've been working a lot lately. Just promise me you would take care of yourself. I was relieved, but also felt terrible I had to cancel our dinner. If she ends up hating me, I'm going to curse Shiranui! I was motivated by anger to finish up the work as fast as possible. I was able to send all the files to our manager with a screenshot of my conversation with Shiranui earlier. My manager was surprised by how irresponsible Shiranui was. And he was furious! He told me he would reprimand Shiranui for her lack of work, which made me feel relief. I'm never going to let her get in my way. The next day, good morning, Shiranui had a big smile on her face. I bet her party went well. The manager immediately called her to come to his office. The whole floor could hear how angry he sounded. Thanks to the screenshot I sent to the manager previously, he didn't fall for Shiranui's tricks. HOW DARE YOU LIE TO ME IN FRONT OF MY FACE! My manager told Shiranui that he was going to deduct money from her pay. Eventually, Shiranui came back to the room with a gloomy face. I really hoped she would learn her lesson from this incident. But she was not the sort of person who would learn such a thing. Afterwards, I had to go on a business trip, so I was away until the next week. During that time, I tried to make plans with Momiji to go out for dinner, which she declined, telling me she had plans already. I really hope she doesn't hate me. I decided to push through and go to work, but... Why is everyone staring at me? Atsumu? Manager! Good morning! Can I talk to you for a second? He summoned me to his office with a frown on his face. He told me something that I could not believe! Is it true that you're having an affair with our company's managing director? What? You mean with the CEO's wife? That's right. And if that's true, you and I are going to have a big problem. No way! He seemed relieved. He told me all about what happened during my time away. This morning, when my manager arrived at the company headquarters, he found a message that said, Mr. Megata is having an affair with our CEO's wife. Now I understand why everyone was acting so weird around me. Even though we all work together at the same company, there are some people that I never met. It was only a matter of time for this rumor to spread around the company. Fortunately, there was no proof of your affair. But please be careful. I already know who would spread such lies. I mean, who else would it be? Hey, why the hell did you do that? What does Mr. Affair want? I knew it! I just heard about the rumor. Why would I ever have an affair with the CEO's wife? Really? I can totally imagine you having an affair with her. <laughs> what? I heard you like mature women. I know you keep going to that bar with the old ladies. That's my house, you dummy! Oh, I know. I should make that your new rumor. This wouldn't have happened if you just kept your mouth shut, but you had to rat me out. Damn it! I didn't even get to ask out Momiji, and now I have to deal with this?! Shiranui's rumor really did a number on me. I wasn't able to properly communicate with others, and I started to crumble under pressure. This ultimately led me to postpone my date with Momiji even further. But one day, I was working overtime when suddenly I got a message from Momiji. Hey, are you okay? Momiji! I heard you had a ton of work these days. Thank you for your concern. I felt really awful after I had to cancel our dinner together. And I'm really sorry for not being able to reschedule yet. Did something happen? It's a long story. Do you want to talk about it over a drink tonight? Really? We both don't have to work tomorrow, so why not? I'll wait for you. Are you sure it's fine? Of course. You can tell me all about it. I couldn't believe she was inviting me over to meet. I was super motivated to finish up my work as fast as possible. I'm here. I was surprised. The place we met up was a place where a bunch of old office workers would hang out after work. Cheers! Cheers. So, tell me what happened. I was on the fence on whether I should tell her, but I didn't want to hide anything from her. So I told her everything. She patiently listened to what I had to say. I see. That Shiranui, she seems like she could use a beating. Huh? When I tried to ask her what she meant, I saw the rage in her eyes. I felt my spine chilling, but she soon went back to her normal self and said, Thanks for telling me. 
let's forget about it and have a drink. Wait, I swear, I thought I saw... You have nothing to worry about. Just go on with your day and everything will be fine. I swear, I heard her say she was going to take care of it, right? The next week... <laughs> Sumu, you're dreadlocks. I thought you were trying to look cool. Huh? I didn't know you used to be a gangster. What do you mean? I mean, I used to be a little delinquent, but I was never a real gangster. Then, what are those bike gang doing out there? What? So, you were the one who framed my pal? <laughs> who are you? I'm Atsumu's pal. I heard you spread some nonsense just because you couldn't do your work. <laughs> no, I just heard it from someone else and... The director What? The director? She was riding behind the bike. And the person who was riding the bike was... I'm Atsumu's mother. Uh, they surrounded me with their bike. They told me if I don't tell everyone the truth, I won't be able to stay here anymore. I told the manager the truth, so please forgive me. Wait, are you really Momiji? Sorry for lying to you, but I couldn't stand my pal getting harassed because of her. I had to do something. Pal? We drank together, aren't we pals? Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, I didn't know your mom was a legendary ladies leader. Why didn't you tell me you were part of a legendary bloodline earlier? What? My mom's the leader of a ladies biker gang? You didn't know? She's real famous around this neighborhood. I didn't know! When I was researching about your affair with the director, I found out she used to be the vice leader of the biker gang. It's such a small world, ain't it? Even I can't beat those two. So, about us. Well, I don't have to lie to you anymore. I liked our fancy dates, but I wanted to be more casual, you know? From now on, let's just go to some cheap place and drink till the morning. Although we went out together more often, she acted much more modest knowing I was the son of her gang's leader. I even found out she was selling clothes for other gangsters. She stopped talking carefully and just started saying slangs left and right. By the way, Shiranui was fired by our director after meddling with our company's affairs. No one really knows what she's doing now. I look forward to drinking with you more. It's a nightmare. She's too good for you. Not again! I'm going to drink until I forget about it. My name is Yoshichi Kakuda, an ordinary salesman. Today I want to talk about the problems I had with my wife regarding the kids. When I was 26 years old, I married Akane, who was 24 at the time. Our marriage was formed through necessity after my wife got pregnant with twins. The older sister is Mayuko, and the younger sister is Mayuka. They are both identical twins. Although they look the same, they have different personalities. The older sister Mayuko is... Mommy, look! Oh my goodness, throw that away! She is a very wild and active type. Whenever she sees a bug, she tries to capture it and keeps it as a pet. On the other hand, Mayuka is very quiet and loves to read. She usually helps out Akane by doing chores. Even when they grow up, their personalities never really changed. They are still very different from each other. Mayuko has become a great athlete while struggling with her studies. She often fights with other boys, which leads us to be called to the school. Mayuka gets straight A's and is often praised by the teacher for her academic prowess. She never gets in trouble and has even shown a talent for playing the piano. To me, they are still both my cute daughters that I love very much. While the twins have different personalities, they are still close with each other. On the other hand, my married life is a different story. I'm back! You're home early. I didn't make dinner, so go make it yourself. Our love grew cold over the years. I guess after 10 years, she just doesn't find me attractive anymore. I continued with my mediocre yet happy life until that fateful day. The company went bankrupt? Yeah, the CEO escaped at night so they didn't give me any compensation. I was suddenly jobless. Akane was a housewife, so we suddenly had no source of income. I was not as young as I used to be, so it was hard finding a new job. Although I had some money left in the bank, it was not going to last in the long term. I was panicking, but 
I'll do my best to find a job and rebuild our life, so please bear with me. Uh, okay. I was motivated by love for my family. What I didn't know was that my wife was not thinking the same way as me. It was when I was doing my best looking for a new job. When I got home... What's going on? Answer the phone! Sorry, we can't talk anymore. Stop lying! That paper says everything I wanted to say. You mean the divorce papers that is already signed by you? I don't understand why you would do such a thing. I know, and I feel bad. I feel bad, but I couldn't take it anymore. Our current life? Yeah, I don't see a happy future with you anymore, especially with the money. I'm sorry about the money problem. I can excuse the divorce. What I don't like is that you did it privately without telling me to my face. You would never agree to it if I did it in front of you. I was just saving time. Fine. But you know what doesn't make sense? You took all of my savings from the bank. I was afraid something like this would happen. You got it. I have all your money. You still get to keep the house, so it should be fair. This money should keep me going for some time. This is why I wanted to talk before getting a divorce. We could have sorted this out without you stealing from me. And one last thing. This is beyond my comprehension. Why is Mayuko the only one in the house? Where is Mayuka? Oh, don't worry about that. Mayuka is with me right now. What is going on? I've heard about people taking away kids during a divorce. But this is the first time I heard about someone taking away one half of a twin. I'm not competent enough to raise two kids. And I knew you wanted someone to stay with you. Of course. That's why I decided to split the kids into two. Are you serious? I can't believe the words coming out. I tried calling her several times after the incident, to no avail. I even tried calling her parents, but they also told me they had no idea where she was. I even tried contacting the police, but I doubt they'll find anything. I gave up trying to hire a private eye due to the cost. And the one who took the news the hardest was Mayuko. Dad? Where's Mayuka? And Mom? Where are they? Did they leave me because they didn't love me anymore? Mayuko was the only one left for me. Mayuko still loved her mother and was very close to Mayaka, even though they are polar opposites in terms of personality. Which is why she was so hurt by the divorce. Sorry. I'll do my best to find them someday. At the time, I was only able to console her with empty promises. Four years have passed since the divorce. I was 40 years old and Mayuka was 14 years old. Ever since our divorce, I had no contact with my ex-wife. I sold our house for some money for the cost of living. During that time, I was finally able to land a stable job and rebuilt our life from there. Mayuko helped around the house, surpassing me in the housework skills. My ex-in-laws helped me out to try to make up for their daughter's sudden absence. I was able to get back on my feet as a single father thanks to the people around me. What surprised me the most was Mayuko's growth over the years. While she's still her hyper self, she drastically improved her grades. Furthermore, she started swimming, which landed her a gold medal in a sports competition. She even got interviewed by a sports magazine for her swimming prowess. We were able to take back the life we once had. Then, I suddenly got a message from my old friend Suzuki. Yo, do you have time right now? I have something important to tell you. Yeah, I'm free. What's up? Are you still in contact with Akane? Nope, as I told you before, I wasn't able to contact her ever since she left the house. Right. What's going on? You suddenly mentioned my ex-wife. A few days ago, I went on a business trip to a different region. And I swear I someone that looked like Mayuka. Really? I only saw her for a split second, so I'm not 100% sure, but... But she looked exactly like Mayuko. How was she? About that. She was hanging out with some older delinquents. There were several girls and boys that looked like a textbook version of a delinquent. You've got to be kidding me. They were with my Yuka? Honestly, she looked kind of different too, like she was a part of them. She was dressing up like a delinquent as well. That's why I'm not 100% sure if it was her. Sorry if I'm wrong. No, no, thanks for telling me. I don't want to judge her from her looks, but I can't believe the little my Yuka turned out to be like that. <sighs> me too. Should we look into it and try to find her? Actually, I was thinking about finding her for real this time. Can you tell me where you found her? I was able to get a lead from an unexpected source. 
I was more motivated to find out where the two went. According to Suzuki, it seemed that Mayuka started to act out more. I guess it's her rebellious period right now. But I was still worried about her. I immediately contacted a private eye to investigate them. I told them everything Suzuki told me. When I told Mayuko about what happened... Please find her! I have a bad feeling about this. I trusted her instincts as they were both identical twins. After a few days of investigation, I suddenly got a message from my ex-wife. Long time no see. How are you? Long time no see? Is that how you're gonna start this conversation? After what you've done to me and Mayuko? Oh, quit being a baby about it. Today I have good news for you. Good news? I'm sending Mayaka to you, so send Mayuko to me. Huh? What the hell are you saying? Is it too hard to understand? I'm telling you to switch Mayuko and Mayuka with me. Are you joking? Are you drunk? Neither. I'm dead serious. Then it's worse! Don't you want to meet with Mayuka? Then I'll raise the two by myself. I want to be with my kids too! Do you even hear yourself? You're crazy! It would make more sense if you asked to raise the two kids, but switching kids? You've got to be kidding. I can't control her anymore! Mayuka? Yeah. So Suzuki did see her correctly. Huh? Suzuki met with Mayuka? He saw her during a business trip. He told me Mayuka was dealing with some other delinquents. Yeah. Someday she doesn't even come back home. On the other hand, I heard Mayuko was doing great herself. I saw the magazine interview last night. I knew it. I knew you only picked the daughter that was doing well. That's why you took Mayuko away a long time ago, and now you want to take Mayuko. How do you live with yourself? I was furious. I bet Mayuka turned out the way she was because of her mother. I ignored all of my ex-wife's requests and kept looking for Mayuka through the private eye. The private eye was able to track the two down. A few weeks later. Long time no see. You! I met her without an appointment and told her the end of my deal. I'm here for one thing only. Bring back Mayuka. Needless to say, I'm not giving you Mayuko. That's so sudden! Let's talk this out like reasonable adults, okay? She was the one who left me without talking. That was the last straw for me. Fine, you leave me no choice. I'm going to sue you for domestic abuse. I found out that after she left me and Mayuko, she immediately moved in with a guy. Mayuka had to suddenly live with someone who she didn't know. And to make things worse, the guy was unemployed and had no source of income. After spending time with the two, Mayuka started to act out. Mayuka was also left alone for long periods of time, having to survive off almost no money by herself. While the people she was hanging out with were delinquents, they took care of Mayuka. Thanks to them, she was able to survive without starving. And when I asked my ex about the situation... You're just making this up! Plus, how do you know all this stuff? It makes no sense at all! She's right. I wasn't able to get all this information from the private eye. It was at that moment when the door opened. Mayuka and Mayuko. Mayuka and Mayuko came into the cafe. After I found out about where the two lived, I decided to meet Mayuka first. I asked Mayuko if she could talk to her about what has happened after the divorce. I thought Mayuka wanted nothing to do with adults anymore. I was so scared she was going to be mad at me. But Mayuko and Mayuka were best friends before the divorce, so I thought that Mayuka would be more comfortable talking to Mayuko. After having a heartfelt reunion, Mayuka told Mayuko about everything. I was finally able to get everything that I needed to take down my ex-wife. Mayuka came here to try to take down my ex-wife once and for all. After you took me away, everything was a living hell. You and that guy. Never ever show your face to me ever again! Afterwards, I called the police on her for domestic abuse. I had all the evidence I needed. I was finally able to raise my two daughters together. I know it will take time for her to fully heal from her experiences, but I'm here for her however long as I need to be. I'm just happy that I can live with my daughters after all these years. My name is Sana Chioda. I'm an average 30-year-old stay-at-home mother. In this video, I'd like to share with you a story about how a small disagreement between one of my neighbors and me developed into a scarring experience. My husband, Rikia, and I currently live in an apartment provided by Rikia's company. 
There, Riki, ya and I live happily and raise our three-year-old son. Since the apartment was built recently, the building was very clean and felt luxurious. And because it was company-owned, the rent was dirt cheap too. We had a good relationship with the neighbors as well, and we were confident that we could keep things that way. But alas, we thought wrong. One day, something happened that disrupted the peace we had in our apartment. Hey, did Miss Kinouchi come by to say hi? Yeah, she did. The lady that just moved next door, right? She was polite and all when she introduced herself, but... I was a bit taken aback when she asked if she could borrow our car when we had just met for the first time. Huh, interesting. And what'd you say? Obviously, I said no. Who does she think she is? We just met. It was so weird. Actually, she's the wife of our new boss that just got assigned here. Her name's Kazuko. Oh, yeah. You did mention your old boss retired. But wait, the Kazuko that showed up at her door looked like she was still in her 20s. How old is your new boss? If I remember correctly, I think he was around 42. I guess he likes them young, huh? Well, that's all none of my business, but... But I need you to get along with her. Why? Wait, why did you even know that Miss Kinochi came to her door in the first place? Well, apparently Miss Kinouchi told her husband what happened between you and her. So now my boss basically knows that you two didn't get off to a good start. What? And he passive-aggressively pressured me to tell you to do whatever his wife says. What in the world? That's awful! He took advantage of his superiority over you to benefit himself? Well, if you put it that way... Now I really don't think I'll get along with her. Please, Sana! The new boss... He was scouted by our CEO to revitalize the struggling sales department. He's got quite the presence around the office, so I don't want to stir anything up with him. Sales department? So you're going to be working directly under him then? Yep. So please, just do your best to not get in Miss Kinouchi's way. Alright, alright, fine. And that's how things began. Obviously, I didn't like the way things were shaping up to be, but I would have hated for my husband's relationship with his new boss to deteriorate because of me. So I swallowed up my frustration and knocked on Miss Kinouchi's door to apologize to her. Then, Miss Kinouchi said, Oh, great. Could I have the keys to your car then? You know, all this could have been so much easier if you would have said yes earlier. The audacity! I want to credit myself for not decking her on the spot. She annoyed me so much that I turned to my husband and barraged him with complaints. All this could have been so much easier. First of all, I'm older than you, so where's the respect? And for the millionth time, we just met! Just because your husband is powerful doesn't mean you are too, is what I wanted to say to her. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Really. I didn't think she would be so stubborn. And what I don't get is, why doesn't she use her own car? I'm sure she has one. Well, apparently they have a daughter who's about to turn one soon. Yeah, I've heard. And you know how our car has a car seat for toddlers? Apparently that's why they want to use our car. What? Why don't they just buy their own car seat then? Their car's an expensive two-seater, so... It won't be able to fit both of them if they attach a car seat to it. And besides, they don't want to taint its look and glamour with a car seat. Well, they've got a child, don't they? Then they've got to make sacrifices. Are you sure he's actually competent? Right now, he just sounds like a douchebag. I didn't want to believe it. But turns out, our sales are going up. Just, I'm sorry about all this. No, I'm sorry too. I know you're in a tough spot. It's just, I needed to let off some steam. I did complain to my husband, but I decided to keep things to myself moving forward. But that's when things started getting worse as Miss Kinochi continued to act in ways that got on my nerves. A few hours after I handed her the keys to her car, Miss Kinochi and her daughter returned to the apartment. After getting back my keys, I made my way to the car to go shopping, but as it turned out, the car was left in a state I couldn't believe. I could look past the fact that she didn't fill the gas back up to where it was when she borrowed the car. But leaving food and trash in another person's car? That was unforgivable. I could only sigh at the state the car was left in. Things like this kept on happening between us, and every time I grew a little less intolerant of her selfishness. Then one day, Hey, let me borrow your car again on Sunday, would you? 
Oh, I'm afraid I can't. We're planning on using the car that day, so I'm sorry. But you're going somewhere for fun, right? Well, yes, it is a Sunday. My husband is going golfing with his clients and I'm joining him. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, your husband's boss needs a car for work. So why can't you just let us borrow the car for the day? But my son has been looking forward to going out on Sunday all week. And besides, if you're only golfing, why not use your own car? We want to take our daughter to my parents' house for the day. So I need the car to have a toddler seat. You could just say yes right now, or I can have my husband step in. Fine. My name is Rikia Chioda. I'm 30 years old and I work as a salesman at a local company. Everything was going well for our family in our humble company-owned apartment until... My name is Shu Kinouchi, and I'm going to be your new boss. Now that I'm here, I'm going to make sure that all of you pull your own weight. So get ready for change! Our CEO scouted a new director for our department to increase dwindling sales. He seemed intense, but I was willing to learn from him. But until now, he's not done a whole lot for the growth of the department. And that's because... Boss? Where are you right now? I'm out meeting clients. When do you think you'll get back? Hmm? I don't know. Why? Is something wrong? We're supposed to have a meeting soon. It's important, so you were scheduled to be there. But have you forgotten about it? Oh, my bad. Guess it just slipped my mind. Just take my place, would you? Understood. Can I ask where the files for it are? Or if you made someone else make the files for you, could you tell me who was in charge of it? Files? Oh, I've forgotten about that too. What? Well, how are we supposed to have the meeting then? Then you'd better get to work on the files. What, from now? There's no way it'll be ready in time. I don't want to hear any excuses. I've been telling you, focus on how you're going to accomplish something, rather than telling yourself that you won't be able to. But there's just not enough time. Just do what I say. And just like that, our new boss just disappears midday and is never present for important meetings. I was worried about our future until the new boss at first, but after a while, sales started going up. He was difficult to deal with, but turns out, he's as competent of a boss anyone could ever ask for, is what I thought, until I heard this from Sasaki, my colleague. Hey, what do you think of the new boss? He's difficult for sure, but it seems like he gets things done. But it's weird. Weird? Did you see the sales report? The guys in our department that had the lowest numbers. They're the ones that have been making the most sales under the new boss. And they're all buttering the new boss up now. I'm sure the boss is picking favorites and giving them the best clients. He's the kind of guy that surrounds himself with yes-men. That still doesn't explain how steep of a growth those guys have made. And we don't even know what boss is up to during the day. Maybe you're right. Everything he was saying made sense. Things did start looking up for our department after the new boss arrived. But I really didn't understand why. What I did during the day didn't change at all, on the other hand. Sales numbers have neither gone up or down, but after the boss's arrival, the bottom feeders of our department started to excel, almost unnaturally. As Sasaki said, it was weird. But it was around the time that I started having doubts about the new boss that trouble emerged again between my wife and the boss's wife. After our car was taken by the boss's wife, it was yet again returned in an unbelievable state. This time, I decided to bring it up with my boss directly. Um, you and your wife used our car today, right? Yeah, we did. As always, thanks. It's been a massive help. That's all fine, but do you care to explain the large scratch you've left on our car? A scratch? I didn't see anything like that. Yeah, when you borrowed it, you didn't because there was none until today. The scratch only appeared when you two came back with the car. So what you're trying to say is that either my wife or I scratched your car while driving? Well, yes. That's what happened, isn't it? It's fine that you scratched it, but you should have told me about it! I really don't know what you're talking about. Maybe another car scratched yours in the parking lot while we were away. That's not likely. Our car has a dash cam attached to it, and I didn't see anything like that happen in the footage, but I did see you try to make a very tight turn, so I think that might be it. Hmm... I really can't recall. Oh, come on! I'm willing to forgive you if you admit what happened, so don't try and hide what happened to me. I'm not even going to ask you to pay for everything. But please, would you chip in half of what's going to take to fix the car? 
Wait, hold on. I don't mean to doubt you, but where's the evidence? Your dash cam didn't capture the exact moment I allegedly scratched the car, right? Well, no. It didn't have a good angle. Then we can't be held liable for this. Maybe you're the one that scratched the car, and you just don't know about it. Or maybe you knew about it and are trying to scam us! Are you kidding me? Do you hear what you're saying? Right back at you. You better watch your tone, son. I know you're a bit aggravated right now because you scratched your car, so I'll let you off the hook for now. But if you keep this up, you'll be in for some serious trouble. So I'd advise you choose your words carefully from now on. Even though my husband stood up to his boss directly, it was to no avail. This was the final straw for both my husband and I. So we decided to take matters into our own hands. I didn't want it to have to come to this, but they left us no choice. For now, let's just say that my husband is no ordinary salesman. Anyway, a few weeks after my husband's confrontation, I got a text from a furious Kazuko. What's going on? I don't understand what's happening. Why was my husband fired? My husband got word through to the CEO and told him about how you've been treating us. What? He's just an average worker. How do you get a chance to talk to the CEO? Isn't it obvious? My husband is the son of the CEO. What? Well, technically, I'm the CEO's daughter and my husband is his son-in-law. That's not what I'm asking. How come my husband didn't know about that? Of course he didn't. My father's making my husband work as a normal salesman for a while. We've even kept it a secret to those close to us, and the only people that know are a few higher-ups. We only invited family members to our wedding, so no one at the office knows about it either. You two are awful! Using your personal ties to your advantage? That's unfair! If you were just a lousy neighbor, your husband wouldn't have been fired. There are other reasons. My husband was suspicious of Director Kinochi, so after the incident with the car, he decided to find out what exactly was going on with the new boss. It didn't take long for things to start clearing themselves up. First of all, sales numbers weren't really going up. Were they, Ms. Kinochi? The only way your husband could get clients was by bribing them and treating them to expensive meals and parties. But the numbers went up, right? Then I don't see any problems with that. Where do you think the money used for the bribing is coming from? Of course he was filing them as expenses. After he came to the sales department, their spending increased exponentially. This obviously raised some eyebrows. I'll state the obvious, but it doesn't matter how much you earn. If more money is going out as expenses, then it's a net loss. But that doesn't mean he should be fired! Well, the real problem was what kind of things your husband was treating his clients to. In the expenses he filed, there was a receipt for an unusually expensive meal. So when they contact the restaurant, it didn't even exist. So what? Apparently, some companies file fake receipts of restaurants and services that don't even exist. Some companies? Strip clubs to be exact. Obviously, you can't file a receipt for a strip club as part of the department's expenses, so... Wait, does that mean... I have no idea if he went there personally or with actual clients, but... That's right. The director was going to strip clubs and filing the money used there as expensive. Needless to say, that was not allowed. Director Kenochi was spending a large sum of money to acquire new clients and gave the credit to his favorite subordinates. My husband brought this up and the truth started unraveling itself even further. Apparently, he's been using tactics boost sales numbers like this from before he was with my father's company. So, Director Kinochi was obviously fired. But to add insult to injury, Director Kinochi was sued by the company and was forced to pay them damages. And so peace returned to our lives with the Kinochi family being kicked out from our apartment.